Biomes are the major ecosystems on Earth today. Biomes cover large areas and are characterized by specific physical conditions and types of organisms. There are six major land biomes, and they include the tundra, the desert, the grasslands, the tropical rainforest, the temperate deciduous forest, and the taiga. In a tundra, the average year yearly rainfall is 15 to 25 centimeters. This is very little. The, the temperature range is from negative 34 to 12 degrees Celsius. This is very cold. So in the tundra, it's very cold and dry. The tundra is found only in the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. These regions have permanently frozen subsoil. So there's only small plants because roots cannot di dig very deeply into the ground. Typical plants include migrant birds, musk oxen, caribou, and Arctic foxes. In the desert, the average yearly rainfall is less than 25 centimeters, and the temperature range is much higher than you might think, from negative 2 to 49 degrees Celsius. So all deserts are very dry, but some can be very cold while others can be very hot. The temperatures vary wildly from night to day. The soils in deserts are rich in minerals, but contain very little organic or living matter. Deserts have few plants, although cactus are fairly common. Typical desert animals include jackrabbits, snakes, lizards, and small rodents. The tropical rainforest has, has an average yearly rainfall of greater than 200 centimeters. That's a lot of rain. The temperature range is from 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. So tropical rainforests are warm and wet. They're usually located near the equator. The soils are fairly mineral poor, but contain lots of organic or living matter. They're characterized by tall trees, which form a dense ca canopy, which covers up the ground. The tropical rainforest has the most biodiversity of any of the other biomes. It contains many, many species of plants and animals. Grasslands have an average yearly rainfall of 50 to 90 centimeters. The temperature range in grasslands is from negative 40 to positive 38 degrees Celsius. Grasslands typically have warm to hot summers and cool to mild winters. Precipitation is seasonal. Most of the soil's organic matter is in the thick topsoil layer. This soil is very rich in minerals and in organic matter. Typical plants include many grasses and herbs, but very few trees. Typical animals include coyotes, badgers, mule deer, rabbits, prairie dogs, bison, and many birds and insects. Temperate deciduous forests have an average yearly rainfall of 75 to 150 centimeters. The temperature range is from negative 30 to positive 30 degrees Celsius. These areas have moderate precipitation levels and temperatures. They're mainly found in North America, Europe, and Asia. The soil in the temperate deciduous forest is rich in minerals and in organic matter. The major plants include broadleaf trees which shed their leaves in the fall. This is what the term deciduous means. Typical animals include foxes, squirrels, raccoons, deer, turtles, and many species of birds and insects. The taiga has an average yearly rainfall of 40 to 100 centimeters. The temperature range in a taiga is from negative 30 to positive 30 degrees Celsius. The, taiga, the temperature in the taiga is cold to cool, but warmer than the tundra. The taiga also gets more rainfall than tundra. The taiga is typically located in the northern parts of North America, Europe, and Asia. The subsoil is not permanently frozen, but the soils do tend to be quite acidic. The typical plants in the taiga include conifers or evergreen trees like pines and mosses. Animals include the black bear, moose, elk, deer, wolves, squirrels, and a large variety of insects. Here's a topic that you may not have heard about in biology class, but there are six questions on the graduation exam about this topic. This topic is limiting factors. A limiting factor is an environmental factor that limits the growth, abundance, or distribution of a population of organisms in an ecosystem. It affects the population's density, or how crowded the population is in a certain area. There are two types of limiting factors. The first type is called density-dependent limiting factors. This type of limiting factor affects a population that is very dense or crowded. The other type of limiting factor is called the density-independent limiting factor. These affect the population no matter how dense or how crowded the population is. Here are some examples of density-dependent factors. 
factors which affect crowded populations more than they do populations that are not crowded. For example, when a population becomes more crowded, competition for food and other resources becomes more intense. Predation increases. It becomes much easier to spread diseases because the organisms are near each other. It also becomes more easy to spread parasites. Of course, there's increased crowding, and this leads to increased stress within the population. Density independent factors affect the population regardless of their population density or how crowded they are. These include things like natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires, etc. affect the population regardless of how crowded the population is. Temperature, sunlight, and human activities. Things like creating dams on rivers, cutting down forests, polluting the environment, spraying toxins or poisons, pesticides. Another thing that affects um, populations that's density independent are physical characteristics of the organisms themselves. Things like camouflage, toxins, poisons. These protect organisms regardless of how dense the population is. And finally, another example is behaviors of organisms themselves. Things like migration, social societies, mating or courtship behaviors help to affect the population density. The smallest level at which organisms are organized is the atomic level. Atoms are the smallest particles of a substance that retain the properties of the substance. The next level is the molecular level. Molecules are groups of atoms that are bound to each other chemically. Groups of molecules make up cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. Some organisms like bacteria and protists are unicellular, meaning they're made of only one cell. Other organisms like fungi, plants, and animals are multicellular or made of many cells. Bacteria have prokaryotic cells, cells without a true membrane-bound nucleus and organelles. Protists, fungi, plants, and animals have eukaryotic cells. These cells have a true nucleus and organelles, and these organisms are also typically multicellular, which means their cells exhibit cell specialization and can therefore take on specific jobs and exhibit division of labor. The next level of organization is the tissue level. Tissues are groups of similar cells that work together to perform a specific function. There are, more, there are four major types of tissues in animals. These are epithelial tissue, tissues like the skin and the, the coverings of the organs and openings of the body, connective tissues, which are things like blood, tendons, ligaments, and bone, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Groups of tissues that work together to do a common job make up organs. Examples of organs in the body include the heart, the lungs, the stomach, the small intestine, the liver, the large intestine, etc. In plants, organs include roots, stems, and leaves. Groups of organs that work together to perform a specific function are called organ systems. Examples of organ systems include the digestive system, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, nervous system, muscular system, skeletal system, and the largest system of them all, the integumentary system or the skin. An organ example in plants is the vascular system, which is made of the xylem and the phloem, the tubes that carry water and nutrients and sugar throughout the plant's body. The next level of organization is the organism. An organism is a complete individual living thing. Examples of organisms include a single person, a single plant, a single bacterium, or a single protist. Groups of organisms of the same species or kind that live together in a particular area at a particular time are called populations. Examples of population might include all the people in Newmarket, all the earthworms in your flower bed, all the roses in your garden, or all the mushrooms in a particular meadow. Organisms in the same population are interacting with each other and also usually interbreeding. All the populations of organisms that inhabit the same area at the same time make up the level known as the community. Examples of a community might include all the species of grasses, insects, shrubs, mice, and bacteria found in a particular area. All of the communities of organisms that inhabit an area, as well as all of the non-living components of the area, are referred to as the ecosystem. Think of an ecosystem as all of the communities and how they interact with their environment. Examples of an ecosystem might include all the trees, plants, and animals in a forest, plus all of the water, rocks, air, wind, and etc. The biosphere is the last level of organization. This is the region of Earth that is supports all life. All of the environments and all of the organisms on Earth are referred to as the biosphere.